Hi guys, following last week's discussion on the basics of fair right calls, and today we're going to do uh, some interesting demonstration using this uh, demo kit uh, we briefly showed you last week. Okay, so the all the theory and uh, how to build this jig and things like that are actually all in this paper by Tim Williams, as you can see here. Um, Tim um, used to be a very big name in the uh, EMC industry in the UK, but um, he retired years ago. So, um, uh, but all his materials are still very valuable, even in today's uh, days and age. So, you know, physics is physics; it never really uh, change, right? So, yeah, just quickly go through this uh, paper as it talks about characteristics of the ferrite and introduce the problems. I will also attach this in the show notes. So here's the bit he talks about, you know, the effective, um, the attenuation, how effective it can be, depends really on the source and load impedance, really. This is just a quick recap, really, from last week's discussion. Now here is interesting. It shows you, again, this is a typical uh, attenuation against frequency curve. And as you can see, red is 18 ohms and um, the blue is 18 ohms two terms okay yeah you can have different uh, configurations and compare right the point really is how do we arrive at this effect of impedance curve like this it's quite nicely plotted right so if you go down go down you can compare different shapes you can compare um, you know the dimension of uh, the diameter of different uh, fair right course and so on and so on. Okay, so very useful and interesting read. I highly recommend it. Uh, and today's um, demonstration really uh, is based on this jig that Tim uh, short, you know, uh, discussed this uh, in the appendix. So looking looking at this, right? This is really a device like a jig like this, two ports, where you could have a 18 ohm channel and a 180 ohm channel. Okay. Uh, two channels. Really, this is just a resistive network. Resistive network. So if I show you on the back of this, you can see we have each side of the uh, PCB. We can use different resistor values. Therefore, when this end is connected to a 50 ohm uh, impedance, it could be, for example, the tracking generator output, which is a 50 ohm, and this end also is terminated with a 50 ohm resistor, right? So in this case, it could be the RF input of a spectral analyzer. But regardless, if you put a 50 ohm there and you measure the impedance uh, between uh, this end and and the sh uh, and the ground, you get you know either 18 ohms or 180 ohms, and and that's it. So yeah, let's we could, we could actually have a yeah have a look. Okay, so yeah, let's have a look. Uh, if we measure the resistor on the 18 ohm path, so that's between this point, which is 18 ohm, and the ground gives about 19.5 ohms. Okay, and this is the 180 ohm impedance path. Let's try out. Yeah, it's about 180. And you need to measure it, of course, with the 50 ohm terminator on, otherwise the value will be very different, okay? So now we know, here you got 18, 180, same applies to on the other ports, okay? First thing um, we need to do is we connect, as I said, um, one end to a uh, tracking generator output. The output will have 50 ohm source impedance, and the other end is connected to the RF input, which also has a 50 ohm impedance and then we're going to do a, uh, a sweep basically we cross a frequency range so in, for for the purpose of the discussion we are going to stop at 500 megahertz in this case okay uh, or maybe one gigahertz let's say so first we change the frequency to one gigahertz that's 100 megahertz yeah and go to tracking generator mode and we can plot okay so this gives you the uh, sort of you can treat it as amplitude against frequency curve. So you, you can see this is uh, it gives you this shape because we of course have some insertion loss by this link. In order to see it properly, uh, I would normalize this and then we start to put in ferrite so we can have a better, uh, more visible uh, result, let's say. So let's just uh, um, normalize this. Okay, so in this with this machine, 
uh, I can just say store reference and normalize. Yeah. Okay, so I normalize it uh, from 0 to 1 gigahertz. Okay, so now let's have a look. Now I have, so first let's try this TDK. As I said, this one, if you remember the data sheet, this small theory core is quite effective uh, getting close to 1 gigahertz. So let's see if that's the case, right? So first we try 18 ohms, right? Let's just have a look. Put the 18 ohms here. And that's it. Okay. This is interesting, this is interesting, because you can see the effective range really to the maximum gives you about 10 dB attenuation, 10 dB attenuation, but at which frequency? Let's go marker, get into, that's about 28 megahertz, gives you uh, about 10 dB attenuation and that's it and getting close to say about 300 megahertz then you don't have any uh, effective of attenuation right that's interesting that's interesting so we can even actually do uh, uh, amplitude let's put a scale to be 5 dB so we can, we can look at it better okay so that's really interesting that's what we found with this ferrite on the 18 ohm link. Let's try the 180 ohm link and see any difference. Okay, so if I uh, trace and then I select this one and then we use another one for 180 ohm. Good, try that. Okay, so for some reason I, I couldn't uh, normalize trace uh, B, so we're still using trace A. But we, we, if you remember the previous curve, then you, you, you know. So now on the 180 ohm, let's try it again. Same, same ferrite. Uh, let's see, let's see. Yeah, now you can see, right, with 180 ohm, the curve is very different. Now the effectiveness drops to only minus 5 dB, but the frequency also shifts, okay? so. If you just look at these two results, you can see, wow, the same ferrite, but working on a different impedance or resistor network will have very different performance. So in one case, you have 10 dB uh, insertion loss at a lower frequency. And then, you know, at uh, in another scenario with higher impedance network, you only have uh, half of the attenuation but at higher frequency but in both cases we don't see any attenuation in a very high frequency but this one definitely works to about one gigahertz it's not like the manufacturing is presenting you a you know fake data sheet but rather really when they perform the attenuation test often it's based on the ideal situation where you have 50 ohm and 50 ohm um, input impedance and uh, source impedance and 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 receiver in impedance. But in this case, obviously, we change that uh, condition, and then as a result, we get very different results. That's interesting. So let's uh, get rid of this, okay? Back to this uh, curve again. And uh, let's try a different ferrite. So this one is from ferrite 61, and it says for working from 100 megahertz all the way up to one gigahertz. So let's try that, let's try that, and see what happens. Yeah, this one slightly, actually slightly better than this one, because it gives me 10 dB at this resonance frequency, and and even, you know, the, the effectiveness, uh, let me just get my trace, uh, get my marker, the effectiveness, is actually all the way up to about yeah about 800 megahertz. 800 megahertz, you start losing uh, the effectiveness. Okay, so let's let's put these uh, as a comparison. So this is one ferrite. Again, as I said, you cannot really say oh this TDK is worse than the ferrite, but really depends on you know the the input impedance and output impedance, right? And let's just just have a look. This 04 Seven fine material from ferrite should only work at very low frequency. So let's try if that's the case. So here we have again uh, 
clear right okay then let's do that right okay you can see yeah definitely in terms of higher frequency range this one does not do anything if there's anything it might even increase the <laughs> Uh, the noise but of course we cannot trust this but what, what the point being made is yeah it does not do well if the material is wrong right the material selection is is wrong uh, and this is all based on a 180 ohm high impedance network of course when we sw uh, switch to the 18 ohm then uh, it's a it's a different story second episode the point we're trying to to come across is is very clear right it, it depend the, the fair right each ferrite core will give you a uh, manufactured data sheet, but it really depends on your application, right? This one demonstrates very clearly with different impedance network, you will have very different results uh, with the same uh, ferrite core. And then, you know, in a, in a fixed uh, impedance network, then with different material, different manufacturer, you also have a very different performance. So knowing that, yeah, if you put a ferrite on a cable, you if it doesn't work, you may not want to stop there. You may want to explore a few more options. Right? Yeah. Okay. Hope you enjoy this episode. So the next one will explore more advanced things. We'll we'll look at multiple turn ferrites and how to avoid parasitic coupling between the turn to turn. So we'll explain that in details for in our next episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.